Oops, where'd my crossbow go? Last year, Meta got a lot of backlash for the Quest Pro, though I'm not entirely sure all of that anger was really directed at the device itself. The issue was that at $1,500, the Quest Pro was super expensive and had a number of fancy features that people didn't really ask for. So it wasn't really the mainstream replacement that people were looking for since the Quest 2 came out back in 2020. But today at Meta Connect, that's pretty much what we're getting with the new Quest 3. Packing a Snapdragon XR Gen 2 chip, the Quest 3 is slated to be the first retail device to feature Qualcomm's latest processor for headsets. Meta claims the resolution of its LCD display has increased by 30% while featuring a new pancake lens, which is something we first saw on the Quest Pro last year that allows the Quest 3 to be 40% thinner than the Quest 2. That said, its refresh rate is more or less staying the same at 90Hz by default, though there is an experimental 120Hz mode as well. As for its design, there's a new Y-shaped headband to help distribute the headset's weight, along with some handy adjustments on the bottom for IPD and more. Meta says there's also a way to adjust the depth of the lenses inside to better accommodate people who wear glasses. But the biggest upgrades are probably on the outside, which is where you get two new full-color cameras for pass-through, along with a new depth sensor, which unlocks new boundary and automatic room detection abilities. There's also a new double-tap gesture, so we're uh, in VR, and if I want to get out of VR and see the real world, two taps just like that. The Quest 3 controllers have also gotten an update, the most obvious of which is the lack of a tracking ring around the top. Meta says that due to the new exterior cameras, the rings just aren't necessary anymore, and with the help of AI and machine learning, the headset can also better track your hand movements when they move outside of the camera's visible range. That said, because they don't have any built-in cameras of their own, they're not full self-tracking like you get with the Quest Pro's controllers. The best part though is that all of the existing 500 plus apps and games on the Quest Store will work just natively on the Quest 3. And sometime in the future, Meta says the headset will even get support for Xbox Cloud Gaming so you can stream consoles directly to the device. But of course, there are a bunch of new titles due out soon along with some older apps that are getting fresh updates that are designed to take advantage of the headset's new capabilities a handful of which I got to test out during our demo. The thing I led off with was called First Encounters, which is a tutorial that's kind of like an MR version of Space Invaders designed to introduce new users to the headset's features. Because the app partially takes place in the real world using mixed reality, the Quest 3 started by asking me to map out the room while automatically detecting larger objects like bookcases and tables. The whole process was super simple. All I had to do was look around so the headset could see everything before moving a bit to help trace the boundaries of the environment. Then I got to blasting. Right away, aiming felt really precise, but my favorite part is that because the headset had already mapped out some of the objects in the room, I noticed some enemies would spawn behind things, which forced me to duck and move in order to get a clean shot. So another thing I'm noticing is that because of the uh, kind of spatial audio in the headset, I can tell when stuff is kind of appearing behind me. So, you know, it's like, that's my, that's my kind of very natural cue to like, you know, check out if something's coming up from behind. After that, I played Red Matter 2, which is an existing game, but this version had been optimized with more detailed textures and increased resolution. And it looked great. Objects appeared sharp and text was way more legible. And when I was able to toggle a mode that showed how the game would look on the Quest 2, the difference was night and day. Then I played other titles, including a VR version of Samba de Amigo, Assassin's Creed Nexus, and others, all of which were really engaging and surprisingly smooth. Now, I'm not much of a rhythm gamer, but shaking those virtual maracas to the music felt really intuitive. And in Assassin's Creed, I was just really impressed how naturally the headset looked when handling stuff like jumping around in VR. And when I got a chance to do some target practice with the crossbow, like even though I'm wearing a headset, I'm closing my left eye to like kind of aim and get that really accurate position. And the bolt is going exactly where I pointed. Which to me came as a sign of how easily it was to get immersed in the action. All in all, as a follow-up to the Quest 2, the Quest 3 really does feel like the update people have been waiting for since the previous model came out in 2020. My one question though is that I'm not entirely sure how much this headset is doing to convince people who aren't already interested in mixed reality. So now that I've had a chance to run some demos on the Quest 3, I think what Meta is doing is really smart. They got rid of some of the features from the Quest Pro, some of the more nebulous stuff like face and eye tracking, which are nice to have, but not exactly necessary to the core experience. And then they're doubling down on the stuff that they're really good at. So you're getting new pancake lenses with improved resolution, better spatial audio, 
and a fresh design that's thinner and way more comfortable. That's a really good combination for a mainstream mixed reality headset that pretty much anyone can use. Then you have those new controllers and by getting rid of the tracking ring, they're just easier to use and a little bit less clunky too. And of course, with a price that starts at $500, you're looking at a device that's a third the price of the Quest Pro. So if you just want something to play all your VR games, experience some new mixed reality content, and have access to all your old games and new optimized titles coming down the line, the Quest 3 seems like a really interesting option, and it's almost certainly gonna be the new mainstream mixed reality headset to be. But we're gonna reserve final judgment until we can do a full review. But that's it from me for today. But for more from Engadget, as always, don't forget to comment, like, and stay tuned for more news, reviews, and videos coming real soon.